We need an asset. Bitcoin is the best. There is no second best. But why is that the case? Well, let's just start with Bitcoin is digital. And the entire world for the last 5,000 years has lived on analog assets. Real estate, gold, silver, paper, money, bonds, buildings, collectibles, sports teams. There is no second best asset, just Bitcoin. This is what Michael Saylor wants all of us to realize. Bitcoin is a paradigm shift and you are running out of time to understand it. In his latest talk at Bitcoin Atlantis 2024 in Madeira, Michael Saylor emphasized that Bitcoin is a game-changing asset because it is digital, contrasting with the analog assets that have dominated for thousands of years. He describes Bitcoin as digital capital, property, wealth, money, and digital energy. Saylor suggests that framing Bitcoin in terms of property or wealth rather than solely as a currency removes political discussion surrounding it and focuses on its true value as an asset. He states that the purpose of this explanation is not to define Bitcoin, but rather affirm its significance to individuals. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Saylor talks about why Bitcoin is for everyone, the first asset of its kind that solves everyone's financial problems. Also guys, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy staying up to date with finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now here's Michael Saylor with his explanation as to why there is no second best. Now we have a digital asset. In fact, this is the digital asset Maybe this is the only digital asset. Now, what is that? What kind of asset is it? Well, you could think of it as digital capital. And I've, you know, we've, we've talked about capitalism. There are hundreds of trillions of dollars of capital. Bitcoin is digital capital. You could also call it property. We have hundreds of trillions of dollars of property. Well, Bitcoin is digital property, something you can own. We could also call it wealth. Bitcoin is digital wealth. Analog wealth is when you own hundreds of acres of land somewhere. We can also call it digital money. Money, a medium of exchange, a store of value, a unit of account. But as you see, sometimes when people get wrapped, when they, when they get focused on money, they immediately go to medium exchange and they immediately think about a currency and they immediately get themselves wrapped around the axle in apposition to the peso or the dollar or the naira, and it becomes a very political discussion. When you come back to think of it as property or wealth, then it becomes much less political. And of course, my favorite, Bitcoin is digital energy. Now, fat is organic energy. The universe is made up of energy. Matter is static energy. Einstein showed us that when he gave us the E equals MC squared. He said, matter is energy, energy is matter. Now, Bitcoin is more than these things. I could, I could go on for a while, but the point of this is not to talk to you about what Bitcoin is. You already know what Bitcoin means to you. Bitcoin's going to have many types of participants in the future. You know, one set of participants, one set of people that are gonna be plugged into the Bitcoin network are clearly individuals. There are 8 billion individuals on the planet. What are individuals going to contribute to the Bitcoin network? Right? The individuals bring creativity. They bring clarity. They bring conviction. They bring capability. They bring the conscience of the, to the world. And, of course, they are going to hodl. They are going to hold Bitcoin for life. Right? Now, how many? Lots. Right, right now, there are hundreds of millions of individuals that have an interest in Bitcoin one way, shape, or the other. It's going to be billions. It's going to continue to grow. And a lot of times, a lot of our education is really focused on the individual. But I think that, I think that we can't stop with the individual because these individuals form groups, families, corporations, governments. They perform nonprofits. They form clubs, churches. There are a lot of ways that individual, individual creativity and aspiration manifest itself. And of course, one of my favorites is families. There's a billion families, billion, about a billion families, and why do families matter? They're the future of humanity. That's why they matter, right? Families bring the compassion, they bring the community, they bring continuity. 
They bring joy. They bring hope. And a, and a family is, is a, just a much more powerful unit than just an individual. Families will hodl. And we start, we're starting to think about families now and how they join the network. But there's a third organization, third type of group, an investment company. This is a, this is an, a set of organizations have not been involved in Bitcoin much uh, for the first 15 years of its existence. But investment companies can be, um, they can be mutual funds, they can be trust funds, they can be exchange traded funds, these ETFs, they can be hedge funds, and they have not trillions, but probably hundred trillion dollars worth of assets floating out there, and they get to decide how those assets will be disposed of and how they'll be situated. And they are actually acting on behalf of families and on behalf of individuals. So on one hand, you can't write them off when they can decide to, uh, to reallocate $10 billion from gold to Bitcoin on behalf of 18 million retirees that used to work for the postal service, right? And when they make that decision, they're making that decision that impacts families and impacts individuals but they're also making the decision as a fiduciary. And the last 36 days have been an illustration of how important these kind of companies are because every day in the market, they're buying hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin, they're trading it and they're building up billion dollar positions. This has just started, we're 36 days into a massive adoption of just these exchange traded funds but it's going to just keep going and they're going to ripple all through the world through all sorts of economies and they will have a profound impact and and in my opinion a profound impact for good uh, it used to be if you go back to 2018 in the bitcoin community if you said the word you said larry fink people go they would say oh larry fink doesn't like us and uh in the year 2024 Larry Fink goes on television and speaks to leaders in the world and says Bitcoin is a store of value. It, it protects the sovereignty of the individual. It allows, it allows you to achieve your hopes. It is hope. Larry Fink has said Bitcoin is hope. Now, what, is that, what does that say to me? It says, we don't have enemies. What we have are people that need Bitcoin that don't yet know why they should be our friend. When someone goes on television and they're asked, what do you think about Bitcoin? And they get poked and they're a little bit irritated. They got to ask the question. They're not an enemy of Bitcoin. They're just not prepared for the question. And in fact, over time, the journalist will do the poking because they know the most important thing in the world today is Bitcoin. And you're going to have a group of people that understand it, that will say it's the future. And you'll have a, a group of people that don't understand it and they will not have embraced it. But it, at the end of the day, with time, with education, we're going, to, we're going to see more and more people join the network and they're going to participate. Now, those investment companies aren't the only type of companies. <laughs> there are operating companies. And, uh, and operating, by the way, how many? If you do a quick Google search, 333 million is the count on Google of companies in the world. Think about that for a second, 333 million. There's a lot of companies and, and, and all of these individuals and all of these families, they all act through corporate entities. Oftentimes you'll see a group of five or six or 10 or 50 or 500 or 5,000 or 50,000. Now, how important are companies? Well, they provide all the products, all the services. They develop technology. Not many people in the room can create their own iPhone. You know, not many people in the room want to manufacture and, and ship all their food or grow their own fruit in the winter. These companies are critical to our quality of life. We know that from Austrian economics. But if you're wondering, like, how long have we had specialization of labor? You know, one, one million years ago, they dug up stone axe factories. And it indicates that a million years ago, before we had writing, before there was recorded history, there was a company manufacturing stone axes, which meant that there was a specialized economy with corporations. 
Well, there were people growing food, there were people hunting, there were people fighting, there were probably people collecting the taxes to pay for the stone axes, for the people fighting. It's, it's all happened before. And, uh, and today, companies like Apple and Google and Microsoft perform pretty systemically important roles, as does the airline that flew you here, as does the contractor that built the stadium or built the bridges or the tunnels or the airports you landed on. These are important. What are they going to bring to Bitcoin? Well, they're going to bring new services, like Cash App as a service. They're going to bring new products. They're going to bring in your, your signing devices. They're going to bring you full nodes or integrated nodes or, or, or the like. They're going to bring new technology. One day, I believe Apple, Microsoft, Google, they will all integrate Bitcoin and layer two protocols like Lightning into their phones, into their computers, into their web services, into their cloud services. They're going to bring cool applications. You know, every single Bitcoin wallet, and Lightning wallet is a cool application. It, they were all made by a corporation. They're going to provide support and and maybe importantly, they provide credibility, right? Companies have credibility with the people. When, when, uh, when a large corporation offers something to a billion people over the weekend, you get 437 million downloads, right? An individual can't get 437 million people to do anything over the weekend. When, uh, when a company has a problem, they pick up the phone, they call the White House, or they call a senator or they call a congressman, or they go to court and they sue. Companies actually can avail themselves of the legal system, the political system, the executive branch. You know, sometimes they're in um, controversies, but companies have credibility, and that credibility will defend the network, it will spread the network, it will enhance the network, it will, uh, it will actually embrace or en enhance and support the lives of every individual and every family. We need them, right? Companies are, companies are not, you know, the evil empire creature that's against you. Companies are just made up of people. And the person running the company either understands Bitcoin or they don't. And if they don't, then they're just a, a supporter waiting to be recruited. Or there'll be someone that understands it, you know, and, and they own it personally, and they're waiting for the political environment and their company to change so that they can buy it corporately. You know, Tim Cook has, has uh, admitted to, you know, owning Bitcoin, right? Lots of senior level CEOs own it. Sometimes they're reacting to their shareholders, their board of directors, their employees, their regulators, and privately, individually, they would pursue one, one uh, agenda, but publicly because they have to uh, report or they have to represent the corporate interests and they have to respect the constituencies they serve, like the customers that don't understand it. They have to wait until their customers understand it or demand it before they can move. But ultimately, these operating companies are going to be great supporters of the network. They already are, and they will hodl. They're going to build Bitcoin on their balance sheets in the same way. So there's Michael Saylor's talk as to why he believes that Bitcoin is for everyone. As Michael Saylor spoke about different groups getting involved with Bitcoin, he emphasizes that many individuals, including those in influential positions like CEOs, may not immediately grasp the importance of Bitcoin due to being unfamiliar with its technology, skepticism about its decentralization, and complexities in its concepts. However, as time goes on and more people understand it, Bitcoin will gain more support. It's bound to attract attention as it offers massive potential for significant financial gain. Its unique features like decentralized transactions and limited supply inspire interest and innovation in today's global monetary system. Sailor reminds us that there are millions of companies worldwide, all of which play critical roles in providing products, services, and technological advancements that enhance our quality of life. 
He predicts that these companies will eventually integrate Bitcoin and related technologies into their operations, offering new services, products, and technologies related to it. Overall, Saylor believes all of these groups, individuals, families, investment companies, and operating companies will all play a big part in the future of Bitcoin. It's only a matter of time until Bitcoin's global adoption. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one, and as always, all the best.